Six o'clock, so I will call to order the meeting of the July 14th, 2021 meeting of the Hingham School Committee. Um, the next item of business on the agenda is to publicly accept the resignation of Superintendent Paul Austin. Uh, on June 25th, Dr. Austin informed the committee that because of personal and family reasons, effective July 30th, he is resigning his position as superintendent of the Hingham Public Schools to move back to his home state of Maine. Um, as the body responsible for hiring the superintendent, we would like to take this opportunity to publicly accept your resignation and to thank you for your exemplary service to Hingham Public Schools. Uh, during your time in Hingham, you led our school district through a once-in-a-lifetime global pandemic with grace, compassion, and determination. We are both proud and grateful for your steady leadership. You maintain the health and safety of more than 5,000 children, staff, and families in our district while ensuring that Hingham students receive the best education possible under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. We also want to acknowledge your significant contributions to our district during your tenure, including a nearly 9% increase in the fiscal year 21-2022 school budget, the successful negoti negotiation of successor contract contracts with multiple bargaining units, the acceptance of Foster School into the MSBA building program, and the acceptance of Plymouth River School into the MSBA accelerated repair program. Additionally, you helped forge an even stronger relationship between the Hingham School Department and our municipal government, which will benefit students and all Hingham citizens in the years to come. In short, while we are disappointed that you are leaving Hingham so soon, we are also incredibly great grateful for everything you did to set up our Hingham Public Schools to grow and improve moving forward. We are happy for you and your family, and as you all move to this next chapter, and we wish you the very best. And I also wanted to read, Carlos um, is not here tonight, and he sent a note that uh, he asked me to read. He said, I regret not being able to attend this meeting as I am in Brazil spending time with my mother. Dr. Austin has been a great asset to Hingham during this very challenging year, and I am proud that we hired him. Although I am saddened to see him leave, I am happy that he will be close to his entire family. I wish Dr. Austin and Lisa all the best. You will be missed, Dr. Austin. Regards, Carlos De Silva. So. Thank you. I don't know if anyone else has anything to say. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Liza. No, you can go first. Uh, I did prepare something. Um, so, in they, true Liza, did true Liza fashion. <laughs> um, so, I, I want to thank Paul. Um, and also, I have a message for Tony Keaty and Beth Wilcox, too. So, um, Paul. I'm very sorry that you're returning to Maine, and I'm sorry that your time in Hingham and in Massachusetts was not what you were hoping for when you took the leap of faith to enter the search process two and a half years ago. We were looking for a student-focused leader, and you delivered on that mission. Unfortunately, no one had anticipated a once-in-a-100-year pandemic, which magnified the challenges we knew were in our district and that you had begun to, the hard work to address. You and Lisa will be terribly missed, and it has been a real pleasure to work with you and become friends. I hope we can visit in the Pine Tree State sometimes. Um, so, and for Tony Keedy, um, he and I worked together for 12 years, beginning when my youngest child began in the first kindergarten class entering the brand new East School, and now that class will be seniors in high school. You joined the district several years before that at South School. Thank you for all your years as a principal in Hingham, managing the special projects of opening a new school, COVID testing, creating maker spaces, and more. I wish you all the best as your education administration career advances in Duxbury. And to Beth Wilcox, thank you for leading Foster School through the transition of leadership. It was a pleasure working with you and your school council as you evolved the goals and programs while helping us plan and envision what a new foster will look like. You were presented with a great career advancement opportunity, and Duxbury is lucky to have you. And last, I'd like to share a message to dear students of Hingham Public Schools. This past year, you have actually lived history and this pandemic education experience will be with you for the rest of your life. I have faith that you have all learned resilience, fortitude, and the silver linings that can be found in adversity. Many wonderful teachers and staff supported you, and they have shared wonderful highlights from the year, despite it being the greatest challenge of their career. I know you have thanked them, as I do, 
for all your, their efforts. My sincere apologies to you students for losing the student-focused superintendent. You knew Dr. Austin as more than the person who called snow days. He visited you in your classrooms. You sang happy birthday to him. He attended home and away sports events, plays and concerts, and made the much appreciated decision to cancel midterms and final exams. I am sorry that a contributing factor to his departure was the misbehavior of certain adults in our Hingham Public Schools community. We teach you and expect you to act with integrity, honesty, and to make positive change. We ask you and expect you to abide by certain behaviors and follow the rules of the road. You learn tools and how to use them to create a positive learning environment, including a key is the please and thank you tool to treat others with kindness and appreciation. Glue is the apology and forgiveness tool to admit your mistakes and work to forgive others. A pencil is the using our words tool to use the right words in the right way and many others. We have these rules and tools to help us all work together toward the common mission and goal of the Hingham Public Schools, to educate Hingham students to be productive, responsible members of a democratic and ever-changing global society. Unfortunately, there are a few parents and staff members who chose to ignore these rules and tools. They chose to express their thoughts as loud and long as possible to disrupt the paths to progress when we were all navigating an ever-changing, unknown world. I appreciate anyone with an opinion and want to hear input on a given issue. I get it that one needs to throw a few bombs to get attention for an issue. I have done it myself. However, there comes a time when the bombs stop, you listen, and do the hard work together to achieve the common goal. I also get it that we all want to be supported and respected. And the support and respect must be returned and shared. Quote, treat others as thou would be treated thyself, the golden rule. That's how, we to how together we can achieve what is best for everyone and deliver it equitably. Several times during the past year, I heard from you students, why aren't the adults behaving and doing what they tell us to do? You are right. The adults need to reflect on the past year with humility. We can all do better for you by living and learning by the same rules and tools. Also, students, please take note of the fine example of Dr. Austin, who is living his personal priorities. His family comes first for him, and that drove his decision to make a change in his life. I highly respect him for that. Please think about what are your personal priorities and are you living up to them? You have my commitment that we will find you an interim superintendent and a permanent superintendent to continue the best parts of your education, continue building on the additional education and special education supports that are coming for you, make progress on the future, and help transition through the more change to come. We will focus on our common goal. That's you. Enjoy the rest of the summer. I hope the sun comes out, and we'll see you in September. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Liza. Does anyone else have anything? Jen? Yeah. Um, <laughs> just want to express my sincere appreciation um, for being at the helm of schools for these last two years. And while your time is short here, you will definitely be missed. Um, I know this hasn't been easy, and I personally want to thank you for being courageous enough to leave your home state and come to a new town and take a chance on Hingham. Your dedication, your leadership, um, and your good heart has been evident, especially over these last 18 months. Thank you for your positivity, your energy, and your compassion for our school district. And I consider myself fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with you this last year. And I wish you all the best. Yes, you. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I wish I hadn't gone after everybody. <laughs> 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 and I'm now emotional because of the heartfelt messages. Um, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming. Um, I want to thank Lisa for your time. I apologize from the bottom of my heart that you had to go through what you had to go through. Um, you know, when I first came onto the committee, I didn't go through the superintendent process. Um, <clears throat> I, I got to meet you when we were both coming on, new to the committee and new to the superintendent role, and we had a nice chat. And I could see right from that meeting, that first meeting that we sat together, that um, the, the committee made the right decision. You were the right person for this job, and I'm really sad that we are going to lose you. Truly happy for your family, um, but you know, we were, we were gonna be starting to do some good work, and um, I'm sad that we're taking a step back. You were the right person. You were the right person for the right time. Um, I've been told that about the chair of the school committee, uh, that there's always seems to be the right person at the right time, and I've had two great chairs ahead of me, and I, I know that that's the case. You are the right superintendent for the right time. So I, I thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. I appreciate Liza's um, message to the students and to the town. I hope that we can um, move forward in a positive way. I hope that we can um, put our, aside our differences and that we can just look for the facts and, and not um, spread falsehoods. So again, thank you. Michelle? Oh, I don't, sorry. <clears throat> I had to write it down because I was not going to be sure I can hold this all together. <laughs> I know. All right, so this is a, this is a difficult moment, um, so I'm going to try to hold it together, but it might not be easy. So, Dr. Austin, Paul, if I may, if you have ever wondered why I voted for you to be superintendent, I guess now is a good time as any to let you know what that reason was. For me, it came down to one word. One word that I heard over and over and over during the interview process from the faculty, the staff, the HEA president, parents, students, town officials, central office staff. One word, and that was genuine. Paul Austin is genuine. He is who he is. He is a father and a son. He is a husband and he is a grandparent and he is an experienced superintendent with a doctorate in education who admires teachers and who believes in the abilities of students, all students. We hired Dr. Austin because he was genuine and he was kind and he cared. He cared deeply about students. Even his most ardent distractors to this day continually comment on Dr. Austin's level of empathy and kindness. The words incredibly kind are spoken about you from every corner of this district. The world is full of leaders who are narcissists, who are greedy, who are petty. The world is sorely lacking leaders who are kind, who are caring, who are genuine. We need this kind of leadership and we are going to miss this kind of leader. The past 17 months were extraordinarily challenging and there was nothing that anyone could have done to prepare for the challenges that COVID-19 rained upon us, nothing. But we had a leader who kept us afloat in incredibly perilous waters, who ensured that every student had a connection with a Hingham Public School teacher every single day. Most districts cannot say that. We had a leader who kept everyone in this district and this community safe. Many communities cannot say that either. It was not perfect, it was far from ideal, it was frankly hell for all of us. But Dr. Austin, and Dr. Austin made some people angry. He pushed hard on his staff. He expected more from everybody, from parents, from teachers, principals, department heads, bus drivers, cafeterias. He expected more than had ever been asked of any of us before because he was focused on the needs of students and delivering for them even with those challenges. That focus not only kept us afloat on perilous waters, it fueled the accomplishments that Dr. Austin set this district up for. As Carrie mentioned, a 9% budget increase, two MSBA projects, six bargaining unit successor contracts. Even one of these accomplishments would have been amazing in a normal year, let alone during a global pandemic. He has set us up for a phenomenal future, but he won't be here with us to see it. I don't blame him. I'll be honest, I'm a little mad about it, but I don't blame him. I am grateful. 
I am grateful for his thick skin. I am grateful for the way he took the slings and arrows on behalf of everyone in this district. I am grateful for his dedication. I am mostly grateful that he and his wife Lisa spent the past 17 months putting the needs of a community that they barely knew above their own. This takes a very special person. This takes a genuine person. Dr. Austin will be missed. His leadership will leave a void. But we are going to forge ahead. We are going to make sure that all of the work you have done to set up us up for the future was not in vain. We are going to focus on students. We are going to embrace all of the good that you brought to this district. And we are going to be a better district because you were here. To paraphrase Alexander Hamilton, when you're gone, the story of who you are is told by those you leave behind. So let's be sure that we remember Dr. Austin's story as one of kindness, one of empathy, and that we all strive to be at least a little bit as genuine as Dr. Austin was. Thank you for everything. All right. Well. Thank you. Like you can say uh, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Can I quickly say something? Oh, sorry. I'm the least per the person to say the least qualified to say anything, so I'm not going to suck up the oxygen. I just wanted to say something so you know it is a unanimous feeling of being proud of the work that you've done and being sad at your leaving. On, I was a bystander over the year to sort of see how people in our community were treated, uh, many of whom are in this room. And it's no, I made no secret that that's one of the things that drove me to run for school committee. So um, all the best wishes to you. And I'm sad we won't get to work together more. Thank so. And thank you all. I, I, I'm touched. Um, I, I guess in my career, I've had the opportunity to change and move from district to district as, as one does when you climb. And probably the decision to leave a position has never been more difficult in my time. Um, I am honored that you chose me to lead the district. I always ask the same question. Michelle knows that I've done this. Why did you pick me? Why did you choose me? Um, and I hope that I have left you in a place that and I, and I do believe this, that it's a place that can be moved forward, and there are great things that are gonna happen. Hingham is a great community. I hold nothing for anyone. The last 17 months was absolutely horrendous. It changed everybody's perspective. It had us look at life a little bit different. It made us angry at things we would have never been angry at, uh, and it made us um, come together at the same time. I'm very proud and of, of all of you, I could not ask for a kinder, more compassionate, harder working school committee than all of you. You're the best I've ever worked with. And I say that I'm on TV and it's gonna be everywhere I've ever gone, <laughs> ever I go. But you guys have been absolutely awesome. This school district is in fine shape and, and you're at the head of it and you do an amazing job and thank you for what you do. I also wanna say that as much as the accolade that you know, I pulled you through. Um, I think we all pulled in the same direction. It took everybody's oars in the water, and that meant not just from us, but from every administrator, every teacher, the HEA, the community, the students, every support staff member, every IT person, every custodian, every food service worker, every person that has anything to do in this district pulled together and did amazing work. I can't tell you how proud I am of them, of what they've endured for the last 17 months. It has been miserable, but I have absolutely no doubt that we are in a good spot. You will come out of this perfectly well, and you'll be moving forward. I do appreciate that you think of me, and, and as you, many of you travel to Maine and go there for the summer or do whatever you do for vacation, just think of me and smile. Um, I would love that. And uh, Eliza, if you want to come visit me, you may do that. And I said that to all of you, come visit me anytime. I would love to see you. And I will pay attention to what you're doing from afar, from afar. But in the bottom line out of this, as, as much rhetoric as I hear about, you know, why I chose to do, you know, this move at this time, I just want to be very clear that my family and my wife mean more to me than anything in the world. Not in the last two years have caused all of us 
to rethink what our priorities are. Certainly the loss of my father, the loss of an uncle, a loss of a good friend during COVID weighed heavily. Not being able to see my grandchildren and see them on FaceTime tugged at my heart every time. And so this is really for my family and I'm taking a step back, take it a little bit easier, take a little more time to be with them and enjoy life the way it should be. So I, I'm immensely proud of all of our teachers, our staff, every member of this district, and immensely proud of all of you for what's been accomplished. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity to allow me to come here and be part of you. I will always remember it, believe it or not, in good standing in my mind. Um, there were a lot of good times. There are a lot of incredibly wonderful people that make Hingham. And I know they will shine and they will continue to shine in days to come. So thank you. I'm touched and I'm honored. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So the next step here is we, we have to talk about how we are going to move forward. Um, so I just wanted to quickly update everyone on where we are with the search for an interim superintendent and see if anyone has any comments or questions on that. Um, so the job was posted and it closed yesterday on Tuesday the 13th. We have several very qualified candidates, so this is really exciting. Um, the screening committee, which we appointed at our last meeting, will meet on Friday, July 16th to review, review resumes and determine who to interview. Um, and also to work out logistics for the interview process. Um, information on all the applicants was shared with everyone on the school committee and the screening committee. Um, if you're not on the screening committee and feel strongly that we should talk to a particular candidate, if, if you could please send me the names before Friday so we can make sure if anyone, if there's someone that we, you really want to interview, we make sure that we talk to that person. Uh, we are planning to schedule interviews the week of July 19th. There will be open public meetings. I just spoke with Harbor, Me Harbor Media. They're planning to record them too. Um, the school committee and screening committee will conduct the interviews. Uh, we'll also arrange to have candidates speak with other people in the district, such as central office staff, the principals that aren't on the screening committee, the directors. Uh, I know the town manager would like to speak to the candidates too. So we'll, we'll set that all up so that they can all get to know the candidates. Um, and we are tentatively planning to meet the week of July 26th to deliberate and hopefully vote on an interim superintendent. We do have a, a regularly scheduled school committee meeting on Monday the 26th, so if we're ready, we could potentially do it then or we can schedule a separate meeting. Um, so we'll see how, how the, the interview schedules line up. So does anyone have any comments or questions? Okay. All right, well, we will we'll keep up, keep people up to date. I'm planning to send out a recap of this meeting um, tonight, and then we'll, we'll keep communicating with everyone um, so the public can stay up to date. So, have, yeah. Just, have the candidates been informed of this timeline? Uh, no, or, okay. not yet. We'll, we'll do that on Friday. Okay. Or, yeah. So um, with that, next is items not reasonably known within 48 hours of the meeting. Um, does anyone have anything? The only thing I can think of is um, the, in addition to the 9% increase in the MSBA and all the other things, a quick shout out to our Massachusetts history teacher of the year. I mean, what a oh, great yes. way to, <laughs> to wrap up. Do you mind if I do that real quick? Sure, and yes. I'll do that? Yes, I did send out a press release today that we were very happy that Christina O'Connor, teacher at the Hingham High School, uh, was the 2021, or named the 2021 uh, Massachusetts State History Teacher of the Year. Uh, that's an incredible honor. Over 8,000 entries uh, across the country. Uh, and as a Teacher of the Year for Massachusetts, Chrissy is already in the running for the National Teacher of the Year, which will be announced, I believe, for the 10 finalists on September 9th. Uh, I can't find a, a better candidate that I could ever be aware of that who is more, not more deserving than Chrissy of getting this honor, as well as hopefully be a National Teacher of the Year, and it would not surprise me one bit. Uh, and so on a good year, being Teacher of the Year is truly an honor. On a year of COVID, although we've done the last 18 months, is truly remarkable and speaks to the quality of the teachers uh, in Hingham Public Schools. Because she's not alone. As much as I want to say Chrissy is exceptional, and she truly is, she's not alone. We have exceptional teachers across the board through pre-K all the way to 12. Uh, and, and it's just another one that accepts the honor, and that's great, but we share that with her, uh, and I could not be more proud of her. So congratulations to Chrissy. I know we 
got the the press release out today, and hopefully that'll hit the papers. And uh, but uh, something really in incredibly special to celebrate. So thanks for remembering that. I should have remembered it myself. No, no, it was, um, I think it is just such a fantastic top end to the year because it was such a challenging year but it really is just validation that our teachers really delivered for our students this year mm -hmm. may not have always felt like it may not always seemed like it but in the end they really did deliver and I mean what a great honor particularly this year yeah you know I've said before and, and I'd say it again that when historians write about this they'll remember stories about Chrissy bringing in a, and having a special speaker at a zoom meeting and People went so far and above and beyond in every one of our classrooms. And those are the stories that need to be shared. There are a lot of them. Uh, and, and hopefully those are what we'll write about in the future. So. Okay, thank you for remembering. We're, yeah. we're pointing that out. And congratulations to Chrissy. It's very well deserved. Um, I only have one. So I sent out an email. Uh, we, the a select board and advisory committee are looking to do a joint meeting on August 10th. At, it's a Tuesday evening. Um, if you could just let me know um, if you're available. I've heard back from some people, but if you haven't, um, if you could just let me know, that would be great, and we can let them know. So if there's nothing else, I will take a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.